Welcome back to the REI Marketing Weekly. It is your host, Josh Culler with Color Media and REI.video. And I'm super excited to have a special guest on the show out of Miami, Florida, sunny, but not so sunny right now, Florida. Um, and we got Oliver Seidler on the show. Oliver, what is going on, my friend? How you doing? I'm doing good. How about you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So um, Oliver and I are in a mastermind. I, I feel like this is a common denominator, Oliver, because I have a lot of guests that are on the show that are from Collective Genius. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I, I need to get start getting a kickback or something for promoting them. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, so Oliver and I, yeah, Oliver and I are in a mastermind called Collective Genius, top real estate investors in the entire world that are in this group. Um, and Oliver, I think you're, you, so you were in my room with Frank Cava when I presented, I believe. And um, yeah. I think that's how we got connected. And there's so many people in the group now that sometimes it's hard to like make connections with everybody uh, in just sure. one meeting. So um, anyway, that's how we got connected. And Oliver, uh, we, we were talking about what topic of conversation to talk about here on this episode. And he brought up a good point of, you know, he just onboarded some TV ads and they're starting to do that in their marketing now. And so what we're going to discuss today, guys, is something that's highly, highly important that is not talked about a lot inside of marketing. And that is how to test properly. So testing your marketing, making sure that you're not staying stagnant in what you're doing and just running with the herd and always doing the same thing that everybody else is doing in your market, because we know that doesn't work very well. Um, but then also like how to know, you know, gauge if it's working or not, making sure that you're not cutting it off too soon. And uh, from the conversation that Oliver had and I uh, um, had before, uh, prior to jumping on the show here, sound like he's been through this a lot. And so this is something that we're going to uh, dig deep into and make sure that he talks about. But before we get into it, and I'll have him introduce himself, but before we get into it, if you haven't already, make sure you have subscribed to the show. Uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts after this episode, head over to the homepage, leave a five-star review with your feedback. And then I just reached out for this book. So if you haven't already, make sure you order the REI marketing book. It is now fully available. I've had some absolutely incredible feedback on this book. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of tactics, strategies, techniques from some of the top real estate investors in the world talking about how they run their marketing and their real estate investing business. Uh, guys, it's a free plus shipping offer. I believe it's like $9 or $8, something like that. This is a marketing show. So you guys always hear me. If you've been listening to the show, this is no secret. I am marketing to you. You are going to be dropping into my funnel and I'm going to be remarketing to you. You're giving me your data. So a little bit of a test there, but you're still going to get a tremendous value out of this. This isn't any fluff or anything. I would say it's probably 95% of what's in here is all valuable content. So make sure you go pick it up. REImarketingbook.com is where you can go snag that. So make sure you do. All right, Oliver, let's go ahead and jump into the show today. We got about 15, 20 minutes that we're going to dig deep into your brain and expertise and what you've been doing. Um, but what I want you to do first is I know you have a book that's coming out very, very soon. And hopefully by the time this episode goes out, we're already going to be in that stage where you have published it. Uh, but I want you to talk about the book a little bit, but also introduce yourself. So who you are, uh, what you do, a little bit about your background and how you've gotten into real estate, just uh, two to three minutes on that, and then we'll jump on into the show. Yeah, sounds good. Funny enough, the book actually just launched today, so we are published. So there it yeah. is. So when this goes out, guys, it is already published. Make sure you check the link down in the description below. Uh, what Oliver is going to give us, and go pick the book up. No book questions. 90, 99 cent. Uh, ninety nine cents for the first week on Kindle. So if you nice. want to leave a review, much appreciated. But uh, awesome. Yeah, so the book is, a. will start with that, I guess, the book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the book is, um, it's basically, you know, I, I started my business 15 years ago. And, you know, for, for the most part, the book is just um, a story of my business a little bit beforehand. And uh, each chapter is just a lesson um, of, or, I'm sorry, a story of kind of what, um, what happened, um, you know, in, you know, the beginning of my career and then all the way through building our business. Um, so each chapter is a story and then really pulled from it as a life lesson. Um, the lesson could be really applicable to anybody who, you know, kind of wants more from life, whether that be hundred percent commission sales, entrepreneur, starting your own business, um, short, short book, 125 pages written, you know, very user-friendly, easy. Um, you know, it's, it's how to renegade rules, how a C student built a life and how you can too. I was a C student kind of written in that format. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, goal is that hopefully, you know, someone can pick up a lesson or something 
uh, from a mistake or an experience that I had and, um, you know, apply it to their life and, you know, hopefully, um, you know, make, make their life better. That's awesome. How can they go get that book? You got it on Amazon, I believe. Yeah. Um, what's the name yeah, of it? It's on Amazon. I can, I can send you the link, but if you go to Amazon, just type in renegade rules, how a C student made it in life, it should pop right up. Awesome. Very cool. So guys, we'll have that link down in the description below. Make sure you do go pick that up. I'm going to be go snagging that. Um, Cause when we were emailing last week, Oliver, after we got connected, you said it was coming out next week. And so I'm like, I gotta go get that when it comes out. So it's already out. We're yeah. going to go snag it after this episode. Easy, easy read. Awesome. Like well, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool. So make sure you guys go pick that up. Oliver, if you could continue just giving us a little bit, I know you probably explain a lot of it in the book, but give us some background of uh, who you are, what you do, a little bit about your experience in real estate, how you got started. Yeah, so I got into wholesale in 2004, um, right out of college, I worked for a company called RealNet and um, became a top sales guy there pretty quickly. They were doing a lot of, you know, kind of shady stuff, stuff I didn't like, so I didn't want to move forward with that company. Started my company in 2006 and um, really did actually virtual wholesaling back then in 2006. Obviously, the market crashed right after that in 07. We made it through that. And... Um, you know, then kind of built out offices throughout the state of Florida and um, bought it. I had a business partner, bought him out in 2015, pivoted the model, actually went back to virtual. And, uh, you know, through through that, you know, we're based in um, Miami. We buy right now, um, buy and sell all wholesale and uh, hard money lending throughout the state of Florida and Georgia. Everything we do is direct to seller marketing and, um, you know, selling properties wholesale and then lending hard money. And this year we're projected about a thousand uh, houses and, you know, three to 400 hard money loans on those houses. That's incredible. Very, very cool. So guys, again, I, I believe all of you said that there's going to be a lot of this story told in the book. So make sure you go pick that up. And yep. uh, we have some ways at the end of the show, guys, we're going to have Oliver talk about how you guys can connect to them. So make sure you do go check those out. Uh, so Oliver, let's talk about the topic today. Um, I want to dig into this for about 15 minutes here testing this this is a this is a really good topic for a lot of people that are listening to the show to hear because no i i have personally found very very few real estate investors that do this i mean at the at the mastermind we were out last week um you know my good buddy eric brewer a client of mine and then also frank kava had talked about uh, their numbers and how they've been testing some of the things that they're doing with answering live phone calls and stuff like that, which Frank Kava is going to be on the show um, here next week. So we'll be having him talk about that. And it's an absolutely stunning presentation that they did. Um, so testing is a really big deal. Let's talk about how you've been doing that and utilizing that in your business and give us a breakdown of why it's important to test. And then also how can you gauge the testing to make sure that's something that A, you don't cut off too soon, but B, you don't cut off too late where you're losing money because <laughs> we all know you could go broke by marketing, right? So let's go ahead and yes, dig into that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, testing is obviously like, you know, critically important in marketing. You know, creative is obviously important too, but I think the data behind it and all that stuff is yeah. what's really more time consuming and, you know, harder to kind of build out and then to look. So, you know, we've always market, our specialty was always letters um, and, for a long time, letters were amazing, you know, really after the crash, you know, it was all foreclosures and things like that. But then around 2009 and 10, letters became profitable. And we always ran with that and did great with it. And what happened was in 2000, you know, probably 17-ish, um, a lot of social media stuff started coming and a lot of people um, selling education and things like that that weren't there before. And people, you know, got into the space, they learned how to do direct mail. Um, when I was doing it, you know, back in 2012, 13, 14, 15, there really, not a lot of people knew how to do it. Um, we did, you know, I'd been in the business since 2004. And so it was easy to fly blind and to just kind of do it. And when you're making a really good return on it, you don't really necessarily, I guess, need to look into the numbers, but then as more people got into the space, it got more competitive. Um, yeah got more important to really understand, you know, where our returns were coming from, what markets, what, what mail pieces, um, you know, all that dig into it, you know, so looking back, I would have, you know, liked to have had all that stuff, stuff set up when there wasn't competition and not have to wait mm -hmm. competition to come in and our return to start going down to start really digging into that um, and just being more proactive with, with the testing. Yeah. And that's interesting. You bring that up. So, um, 
I got into real estate in 2013 uh, or early 2013, uh, late 2012. And I remember Oliver when you could snap your fingers and get a deal from like HUD or MLS auction.com. Yeah. And then it was just dispositions marketing that you did. Right. So I, I worked, uh, I was a marketing director for a good, uh, good buddy, Gary Harper, and he was partners, a couple other guys, Wayne Schaefer, Tom Olson. And um, I was running all their marketing. I remember almost overnight in 2016, it just changed. Like it flipped on its head where everything was dried up and all the marketing we started doing was now acquisitions marketing. And right. it's interesting that you bring that up that, you know, a really big contributor, and I've, I've said it too, I think a big contributor to what has happened over the past where deals are so tight is because there is so much education about, out there about it. I mean, people are starting to get the hint that, hey, you could become super financially set for doing wholesaling and uh, getting into real estate and that kind of thing. And everybody's teaching it now. And, um, you know, so everybody's into it. The market's just saturated at this point. And that's something to keep an eye on. It's not, it's not just that scenario specifically, but the fact that you bring that up tells me that you are eyeballing these scenarios along the way. And that's, that's not going to be the next, that's not going to be, you know, the only anomaly that happens if we ever get back to a point where deals are a little bit more abundant and not as scarce, that kind of thing. So I think it's important to make sure you're, you're testing what you're doing, but also keep an eye on what everybody else is doing because. Yeah. I mean, lot, I think it's good. No, no, you go ahead. You, I, I know you had something good to say. So, <laughs> no, I mean, I think, yeah, of course. I mean, there's the, the whole space has changed um, as far mm -hmm. as education that's out there. I would almost say at the, it's at the point of over uh, education. Yeah. Like, what do you listen to? Because everybody's got a little bit of a different spin on things and and how to mm -hmm. do things. So, I think it's actually where it went from being hard to figure out. I, I think now there's just honestly too much information and too many different opinions. And I'll be honest with yeah. you people that are educating, I, they don't, they don't even know. I don't think yep. they're a successful wholesale business um, or yep. investing business. A lot of them are making their money on education, which is fine. Um, yep. But, you know, I think that's kind of, you know, outside of the marketing stuff right now, um, the education is, it's great. It's good. And it's bad because, you know, sometimes too much information can be not good. But, but that's a good point though, because you know, like you can listen to YouTube videos. All You can watch YouTube videos all day. You can listen to podcasts all day. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point you've got to go. Imp I mean, this is, we're getting into like take an action type of thing. But at some point you got to go implement. And we'll talk about specifically marketing. At some point you got to go take what you've learned and test it. Yeah. And then figure out if it works or not. And I think that's what you're getting at here, right? Yeah, well, I mean, of course you need to start doing it. But then, you know, it's, you know, there's two parts to it. One is you have to get yeah. the parts but first you have to get the phone to ring with the marketing but then you got to close the deals too um yeah. so you you, you got to have and then you got to close the deals right so you have to have the first part which is well capital and some risk and you know stuff like that and information to go out and start marketing but then when the phone rings you have to close the deals and then or yeah. you know uh, secure the contract and then after that you have to have the administrative part to close it and so you know, we have a lot of sales training and, you know, you, I can give the same leads to two different people and one can produce 10 X off the exact same leads yeah. in the person. So, you know, while the marketing is, you know, the first step in getting the phones to ring still the sales process and all that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a lot of like juggling pieces and things to do this, particularly to do it on a bigger scale or to get some real traction, um, you know, to do a one-off deal, somebody can probably do, but um, you gotta, you gotta, you know, have sustainability as far as your marketing spend, you're being able to answer the phones, you're being able to close, being, uh, able to, you know, fund the deal and, and, and fully close on it. So there's a lot of parts for sure. Now, now let's dig into that for a second. You said you have to, you have to be, you have to have a sustainable model in order to be able to continue to market, bring leads in, close deals. Can you dig into that a little bit? What does that specifically yeah, mean? I mean, I think that's one of the biggest things that happens is that people market and you know they maybe have a little success with it and then something happens maybe they don't close deals um, maybe COVID happens and you know everybody gets smashed maybe the elections happened what happened in november and response rates went down there's a lot of there's a million things that happen um especially over the course of time and what we've always found because we market consistently um, is that a lot of times when those things happen, people will pull out and they stop their marketing spend or they pull right. back. And, you know, for me, for us, it's great because we just continue to market consistently yeah. throughout that. So I think that, you know, 
you got to have the you got to have capital behind you and you got to you know save money when times are good and then be able to kind of market consistently because if you don't that's when the you know the bigger guys are going to be in there they're going to market consistently and wait for those people to you know to pull out and you know you pull out a direct mail for a month two months then you try to go back to it and then it's like you got to wait another month or two for the mail to hit and you know all, all kinds of pay-per-click super hard to turn it up really fast or turn it down really quick every time we've done either two it doesn't work so i think consistency is like really important as well no that's a good point I, that's something a lot of people need to hear because you know if you're if you're going through a spout where you're like uh you know facebook ads aren't working or direct mail is not working well there might be a contributor to that in the market that's hitting that or, or your strategy could be wrong either one. I, but I guess yeah. that's a good question for the next like line of conversation we'll have here is at what point do you look at something and say, it's not working the way it's supposed to be, or the way I expected it to be. I planned it to be, I would do Do I cut the cord? Do I stop doing, do I stop doing direct mail because it's oversaturated and I'm not getting responses? Do I take a break? Because then if I take a break, now I got to re exactly what you said. Now I got to redistribute that direct mail all over again. At what point are you looking at that data and saying, cut the cord or continue to give it some, some juice and see what happens? Yeah. I mean, it's like every source is different. Um, it's a loaded question. <laughs> it's super lo yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a lot, a little bit of it is feel and date. I mean, it's, it's a combination of data, um, a little bit of a feel to it, a little bit of experience to know what, yeah. what your, your histories look like. But, you know, I'd say it's, it's every source is different. You know, what do you do different in direct mail to pay-per-click to TV, you know, TV, you might not get the response rate direct off of the TV, but your pay-per-click or your direct mail might start doing better. Is it a result of TV or not? So yeah. it's different. Um, and I think you kind of have to look at it all differently. Um, there obviously becomes a point where you just have to say, all right, my, my ROI on this is shit. It's been shit for a long time. I got to kind of repivot the money and put it into something else, but it's so dependent on the source and dependent on your internal operations as well. A marketing yeah. channel does not look like it's good, but is that because of the marketing or is it because of your sales guys can't close? Um, right. And so that's yeah. why I think measurement wise, you need to be able to see, you know, I guess top of the funnel, it's like, you know, how much you're spending. Well, I guess they say top is, are you getting in front of all the different people who are actually selling their house? Yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, how much are you spending? How many calls or forms are you getting back? Like what's your cost per lead basically on those? And then how many of those leads are qualified leads? And then of those qualified leads, how many are getting contracts sent? how many are closing and all that. And you kind of need to really look at that whole funnel and see, you know, is it the marketing that's not working or is there something else in your business that's not? That's a really good point. Again, this is, I know I keep bringing it up, but this is a topic that they talked about at Collective Genius last week. Yeah. Is uh, Eric Brewer specifically said, he's like, a lot of times we look at, you know, we're not closing deals and we'll look at like, is our sales guys, you know, do they suck? Do we need to, you know, com completely wipe out the team and hire new people or, I've streamlined the processes or are we not getting enough leads in? Oh, we're getting enough leads in. We're like, what's going on? And then nobody looks at the middle of what they're doing, um, yeah. which is a lot of the follow-up and the curation of that lead uh, and, and continuing to hit that. And I think that's a really good point. I mean, a lot of people look at leads, you know, a lot of people, I actually had Andrew Newland on the show uh, a couple months ago and he talked about how he pretty much went broke from marketing because they were getting um, 10 X. So like over, a month they amped up their marketing like um the five times the amount that they were spending uh, across all platforms that they were marketing on and they brought in 10 times the amount of leads that they had originally been bringing in and that was within one month and they almost went broke over it they were bringing yeah. leads in left and right but they had no systems or processes on the back end or throughout the middle to get those leads down the funnel to close them and, and get those deals closed so it's a good point. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be looking at every facet of the funnel that your lead is flowing through in order to streamline it. And the answer, like you're saying, and it's not always to market for more leads. Sometimes you got the leads. Yeah, that can actually be the worst thing. It's like, you look at it and you go <sighs> yeah. 10 or 15 X return. So let me just dial it up or whatever it is, but that's yeah. could be a recipe for disaster. I mean, the good leads get mixed with bad leads and then your sales yeah. process comes off and it just doesn't, it doesn't always work like that. I, I've I've just found that it's like slowly dialing it up is always better. Seems like for mm -hmm. us. 
Yeah, so I agree. I agree. You you know, you, that allows you to keep your your finger on the pulse a little bit more. Um, allows you to completely analyze is this working or not. And I think essentially that's that's the formula. That's the answer to my question that I asked about like at what point do you decide to cut something off? Well, it's not it's completely amping up that 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 you know direct mail campaign. It's not completely turning on uh, PPC and just going balls to the walls on it. Like sometimes you just got to pace yourself and be willing to, you know, build that up to where you're able to keep a pulse on it and handle it. Yeah. I think, I think you got to look, like I said, you got to look at each channel differently and then each market differently if you're in multiple markets. But I think, sure. I think that's good um, as far as how long you're going to give it is ahead of time to say to yourself, like, all right, I'm going to give my six months, whatever it is. Right. And I'm going to give myself a budget of this and I'm not going to go lower than that. You know, maybe I'm not going to go plus or minus 20% or something like that. And I'm going to yeah. give it this time, no matter what happens, no matter what the return looks like, positive or negative, I'm going to run with, you know, this amount of direct mail pieces per month or whatever it is, or I'm going to run with this amount of pay-per-click spend or this amount of TV and be disciplined enough to say, all right, you yeah. know, I'm going to look at this, I would say minimum three months, but probably more like six months and, you know, give it that time and evaluate it at that time. Because sometimes, especially with, you know, wholesale or flip or whatever it is, our margins, they're, they're huge, right? So you, you could be looking at your marketing channel and be like, shit, you know, I'm getting a one-to-one return or 50 cents, but then who knows, maybe the next day you're going to get that $50 deal that comes in and you might've cut it off ahead of time. So I think giving it a set period of time, my, my recommendation probably six months, um, and at a certain level and then reassess then, and actually not even go too crazy with the numbers beforehand, just because we are playing in like a low volume, high ticket item industry. And, you know, sometimes it just takes time to get enough data to have a big sample size to really look at. Yeah, that's a really good point that you just brought up. It's, it's, it's a lot, like we're in, especially the market conditions right now, Oliver, is like low inventory, but it's high ticket. It's not like we're selling, uh, you know, vitamin waters, <laughs> you know, we can, it's yeah. not like we could sell like a hundred thousand of these today. Um, yeah. we're, we're talking about real estate is these are houses. There's, there's only yeah. a, a limited amount of supply, no matter what way you slice it. So you have, to, I, I agree. I think six months is ideally like in marketing in the marketing world, six months is ideally what you want to do is give it that, but obviously a full effort, you know, you want to make sure not necessarily full budget and putting, all of your money into one bucket here, but um, doing it right is the important thing, obviously. And I would say six months is definitely a good point. So um, Oliver, man, this has been an incredible episode, just uh, like incredible insight on, you, you could you could really tell that the marketing guys is something that Oliver is really, he's really versed in, and that comes with a lot of experience that you've gone through, uh, is, would be my assumption. Um, but you, you can tell that you dig into it. You, you know, your numbers, you figure out what works, what doesn't. And I think that's a reason why you said how many transactions this year? Yeah, we're projecting about a thousand. So it's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. Jeez. So guys, listen, if you're listening on the show right now and you're wondering why your marketing is not working, well, you just heard it from somebody that's about to do thousand transactions this year. So take it for what it's worth. Um, Oliver, man, I appreciate you uh, being on the show today. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity besides the book. Well, well, obviously guys, like you're at the end of the show right now is the time to go. Like you can leave the episode right now, go get Oliver's book. Make sure you go do that. Um, again, that'll be linked down in the description below, but Oliver, if somebody wanted to connect with you, learn more about what you got going on, maybe some programs that you have, uh, whatnot, what's the best way to connect with you, whether that's a website, Facebook, email, whatever works best. Instagram is always the best for me. Um, my Instagram is Oliver Seidler underscore. Um, shoot me a DM on there. Follow me, you know, follow our company and, you know, just message me there. It's the easiest way. Sounds great. And we will have that handled down in the description below as well. So make sure you go check that out. Oliver, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Thank you so much for being on and we will have yes, you back again soon. You. Thanks for having me. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, if you haven't already, make sure you have gone and picked up the REI Marketing Book, reimarketingbook.com, low cost, super, super high value. So make sure you go grab that. And then now is the time to head over to the homepage of this podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, leave me a five-star review with your feedback. I would much, much appreciate that. Thank you guys for joining us and we will catch you on the next one. See you later.